All right, guys, how's it going? So I want to compare some Windows laptops to the MacBook Pro 14 because there's a lot of folks out there, including Apple themselves, that only seem to be comparing MacBooks with Intel chips from all the way back in 2019. But since 2019, both Intel and AMD has come a long way in terms of their chip design, and it's actually a lot more competitive than you may think. So the thing about Windows is there are so many choices. Since I have the MacBook Pro 14, 14, and this retails for $2,500. I wanted to find the best competitor I could on the Windows side that's also $2,500. And I spent a lot of time debating in my head which one I should go for. I chose the ROG G14 because it had the most powerful specs while still being a premium product at under $2,600. If I wanted to go with just pure premium build quality, I would have went with something like the Razer but I would have been left with only a RTX 4070 instead of a 4080. This, I'm able to get a full RTX 4080, and I think that'll help when I get to the benchmark section. So both of these laptops have been sleeping for a while, so I wanna see how long it takes for each one of them to boot up and get me back to a spot where I'll be able to work again. So here's the MacBook. All right, now it's pretty fast, I'm already in. So at this point, all I need to do is putting in my fingerprint and I'm set. Nice. All right, so now let's take a look at the ROG G14. Oh yeah, that's right. With most Windows laptops, <laughs> it doesn't even automatically boot up when you open the lid. You gotta turn on the power button. And I pressed it and I can see the backlight. You gotta go through this splash screen and it's still loading it's still loading it's still oh there we go all right and that's something else i should probably talk about too you see that that's a uh, i'm at low battery right now so I, I had this asleep for a little while and i was at like 40 percent battery just while i was sleeping it went down to 18 percent and i'm using optimus right now so i mean if you're a mac user you probably don't know what that means it means that it's relying more on the integrated GPU instead of the dedicated GPU, which is supposed to be a lot more efficient. So that's the thing, like when it comes to just being a laptop, the MacBook just always performs better in that sense. I mean, not benchmarks, benchmarks, we're gonna get there soon, but just in terms of being a laptop. All right, and speaking of charging, this brings me to today's sponsor. This is Ugreen's Nexo 300 watt charger. You can fast charge five devices at the same time. And the best part is, it's very compact and the power supply is built in. So no external power brick. That's the power of gallium nitride technology. So now let's quickly talk about these charging ports. The first one supports 140 watts using USB power delivery 3.1. So you can charge your MacBook Pro 16 from zero to 56% in 30 minutes. The next two supports 100 watt fast charging, perfect for charging phones, laptops, and even gaming consoles. And then you end up getting one more USB type A and a USB type C. So with my OnePlus open, it shipped with a USB Type-A cable as a charging cable, and I'm able to use it, and it supports fast charging that way too. All right, guys, so I really wanna demonstrate this. So here I have the Ugreen Nexo 300 watt charger, and right now I'm using all five outlets. So it's connected to my work laptop, to my MacBook Pro 14, to my ROG G14, to my Legion Go, and also to my phone. So all I do is Plug this in, so this goes right into the wall. And then on the other end, because this has a built-in power supply, so you just plug this in, and then everything starts charging. So my phone is charging. I'm getting fast charging on the G14, extremely fast charging on the MacBook, 140 watts. Using Power Delivery 3.1, the Legion Go is also fast charging, and charging on my laptop, which doesn't support fast charging, but it's still providing a charge though. So now this has been charging all five of my devices for a good amount of time now, and it hasn't heated up. It's not even warm to the touch. And this has a PVC shell that is fire resistant and flame retardant. So you green take safety really, really importantly. So 
I'm really happy about that. But anyway, that's this crazy 300 watt charger by Ugreen, the Nexo 300. I'd like to thank Ugreen for sending this out to me and sponsoring this portion of the video. All right, thanks guys, back to the video now. And then like another thing I wanna talk about is like, Everybody just obsesses over MacBook's trackpad, saying that it's so much better, it's so much better. But I mean, look at them side by side. They're about the same size. And just about every single Windows laptop, at least on the premium side, has really good trackpads now. They're usually all really large, they're precise, and they're just as good as Macs now. Okay, so display. I'm not going to go into too much detail because I did a full analysis on the display in my first look. But... I did say that that was the best display I've ever seen, and that still holds true. It is an amazing display to look at. The only thing is, though, for gaming, the response time is a bit high. So even though this is running at 120 hertz, you almost can't even tell because of the amount of ghosting that's present on the screen. And yeah, that's the thing about Windows, there's just choices. And I usually go for gaming laptops, and every single gaming laptop I get usually has amazing screens for gaming especially when it comes to response time and input latency. On the Mac side, if there's something you don't like about the MacBook Pro, then the only option right now is the MacBook Air, and, and it still uses the same design language. It's just a smaller, and thinner, and cheaper machine. So on the MacBook side, you're just kind of stuck with Apple has to offer. Thankfully, they offer a fantastic machine. All right, so the main purpose of this video, I wanted to go over some of the performance numbers I've been getting just to prove that Windows isn't falling <laughs> by the wayside as a lot of apple centric channels might want you to believe and even apple itself wants you to believe all right but you know what before i get into benchmarks that's all they are just benchmarks and i say this when i'm doing gaming laptops too all these benchmarks mean is that one device performs this benchmark better than another device. That's it, nothing more, nothing less. It doesn't mean that if the MacBook Pro wins a benchmark means that it's faster and better than another laptop for every single thing. And on top of that, these are two completely different architectures. Apple is running on ARM, Windows is running on x86. And on top of that, the operating systems are very different too. Windows is running on Windows and Apple is running a Mac OS. So they're completely different codes and you can't really compare them apples to apples. Yeah, I did that purposely. But I know that's what people care about, so let's get into them. So the first benchmark I wanna start off with is Cinebench R23. Okay, so the ROG G14 with the Ryzen 7940HS is in last place. So it's getting 13,396. Compared to the MacBook Pro 13 M3 Pro, remember these are both the same price, you're getting a 9% improvement with Apple Silicon. And it also does it using less power. And it also performs the same when on battery. I tested the ROG G14 on battery with the Cinebench R24, so I'll get there in a second. So the Ryzen 7940HS isn't the most performant chip. It's meant to be efficient. I'm not trying to make excuses here. The MacBook Pro is more efficient and it's beating it. But then let's look at Intel's chips. The Intel 13th generation is pushing ahead. So the Legion 9, 13980HX also shipped with 165 watt charger. So I tested it at 165 watts. So actually in terms of total power output, I would say that the Legion 9 would be a closer match with the M3. Even though the M3 Max has a total thermal output of maybe 75 watts, while the Legion 9 is pushing 165 watts and it still can't beat the M3 Max. But if you give Intel's 13th generation CPUs more power, it's able to beat the M3 Max. So when I connect the 330 watt power brick instead of the 165, you, so with the Razer Blade 16, I got 26,318. And on the Legion 9, which is the highest I've ever tested, I got 28,086. And all of these are thermally limited. All of the Windows laptops I've used thermal throttle. Um, so there is probably even more performance to be had out of the 13980, but also more power, the more heat, and the more heat, the larger cooling solutions you need. So those laptops start to get a lot bigger, heavier, and thicker. On the single core side, we're kind of seeing the same pattern, except Intel seems to be doing better on single core performance. As you can see with the Legion 9 at 165 watts. The, so the Legion 9, when running at 165 watts, is able to beat the M3 Max. And the M3 Pro, 
is sitting in second to last place and then the rgg 14 is in last place so that's the cpu side but let's bring the gpu into the mix and that brings me to cinebench r24 so this is the 2024 revision for cinebench and they've implemented a gpu test so let's go over those so the rgg 14 while running on battery is 50 percent faster in terms of gpu then the M3 Pro 18 core GPU. But then when you plug in the RGG 14, you're getting 15,741. And that ends up being a 61% increase for the RGG 14 with that RTX 4080. The thing is, NVIDIA is just leagues ahead of everybody else in terms of GPU performance. I, I don't see Apple being able to compete with NVIDIA for at least the longest while. And... I also want to point out too that this is Apple's new silicon for 2023 going into 2024. Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA hasn't announced their 2024 lineup yet. So in just two months, we're going to be getting brand new chips from, from Intel, AMD, and NVIDIA. And I'm expecting those gains to be massive. I believe they're all going on a die shrinkage again. It's rumored that Intel is going to be going down to seven nanometers. And I know that's not as much as Apple's three nanometers, but look how good Intel is able to perform with their 10 nanometer. So I don't think Apple's going to be victorious for much longer, but let's look at the CPU multi-core side. And that's where things get a little weird. In Cinebench 2024, Apple is destroying the competition. Well, I don't want to say destroying, but it's winning by a decent margin. And also, you got to remember that a Apple CPU requires much less power to perform the way it does. That's why they could have such smaller machines and be able to run the same when plugged in versus unplugged. Look at the G look at the G14 on battery, though. It's not doing that much worse than when plugged in. And then, you know, and it was the same with the GPU side. So we're over the days where Windows performs way worse when running on battery. That's still something I see in a lot of comments and on social media and everything. So I, I just want to put that out there that, you know, you can get work done on your Windows laptop while on battery. It just won't last as long as a Mac. But anyway, the MSI Titan GT77 is beating the M3 Pro, but it pushes a lot more power to get there. And, it, and it's not able to beat the M3 Max. And if we look at the single core performance... The G14 is in last place again, but then look at this, the M3 Pro and the M3 Max are destroying Intel in single core performance. I still want to point out again that we're comparing the newest Apple Silicon versus essentially last generation's Intel chips. So in two months, these cores are going to be very, very different. And of course, I'll be there covering it. So let's get into some gpu gaming style benchmarks and i'll talk about what gaming's been like a little bit towards the end i didn't cover too much of it because these the, the gpu benchmarks actually do indicate the gaming performance versus windows laptops but anyway let's get into solar bay so if you're not familiar with solar bay it's a ray trace cross-platform graphics benchmark using vulcan and on the apple side it actually utilizes the metal api ray tracing for apple silicon 3d mark is advertising this as a cross-platform graphics test so i figured i might as well compare it i have a lot of scores from apple products including the iphone 15 pro max the ipad pro m2 and also some of the portable gaming systems so let's get into them the rtx 4080 is stomping all over the m3 pro apple silicon just isn't quite there yet when it comes to gpu performance especially when it comes to ray tracing nvidia is probably like five or six generations ahead apple's got a lot of work to do to start catching up all right all right so let's move over to geekbench 6 i feel like windows users hate this benchmark i'm one of them it's just something that apple fanboys use to show how much more powerful quote unquote Macs are compared to Windows laptops, it just seems like Geekbench always favored Apple Silicon, um, including on the phone side. But anyway, I guess I just have to run it. Um, I'm going to just go through this really quickly. To no one's surprise, Mac is winning Geekbench. That All that means is Apple is better at running Geekbench 6 than Windows laptops. But that's just on the CPU side, both the single core and the multi-core. When it comes to the GPU, Apple's home field advantage still can't even compete. So like the so Nvidia's GPU is just 
much 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 stronger and that and same thing when i did blender like i i thought something was wrong yeah it's it's not even close so i mean and i started running some games and i was just seeing the same thing so i kind of just stopped i mean there's not even that much games that support apple silicon natively using metal api and even metals upscaling technology and i can't find anything that runs metals rtx right now so but the few games that i did run it, it, it was kind of what you're seeing on these benchmarks a windows laptop will destroy apple silicon in gaming and it'll look better while doing it that kind of concludes this the main reason why i wanted to make this video is because it's kind of being put out there that windows laptops are like kind of caveman devices and they can't perform as well they run super hot they don't the battery doesn't last as long okay well some of that is true still but <laughs> in terms of performance though windows is winning in some areas especially on the gpu side and in terms of actual devices i think i think there's a lot of fun and really cool windows laptops out there and obviously if you're living in the apple ecosystem it ends up being a lot better for you and easier for you but thankfully i don't i'm agnostic i'll switch from an iphone to a samsung to any phone on a whim so i purposely stay away from things that lock me into an ecosystem which includes apple products so i I've, I've always preferred windows for the longest while in terms of their operating system one day i want to do a deep dive comparing the two operating systems that could be a fun video but um a really difficult video all right guys so if this video was helpful hit that like button i want to do a lot more comparisons like this i want to do some more subjective comparisons too and i also have a lot more videos planned i'd like to thank you green again for sending me these amazing products thanks guys for helping me get here all right i'll see you guys in the next one bye